Hi, I'm Denise Gagne, creator of Music Play and Music Play Online, and I'm here today to do an overview of Lesson 33 for May Week 2, second week of May. I'm on musicplayonline.com, and if you're doing the lessons here, here is the online learning, and you choose your grade level here. For, and if I choose pre-K, there's my Lesson 33, but I'm going to the new site which right now is called baitit.musicplayonline.com. But in September, it's going to be the main site and we will retire the classic. So if you're using beta for the first time, go to your dashboard and then click on student access code and generate your access code. Once your access code is generated, you can give kids a link to anything that you would like. You can link them to a learning module. So if I want my pre-K kids to be able to practice lesson 33, I give them a link to this. And if you look beyond where it's showing, you can see it's embedded my access code in the link, and it should do that automatically for all lessons. Don't use my access code, use your own, but um, it should automatically embed your access code. If it doesn't, that's okay. You can um, give them a copy of the access code in their Google slide. It's a, a different access code for every teacher. And you will keep that access code as long as you're a subscriber. So if you subscribe for the next 10 years, that will be your access code for the next 10 years. It's one letter and six numbers. And it doesn't matter with the letter if it's uppercase or lowercase. We've made it case insensitive. I have um, six grandchildren and my three that are uh, youngish in uh, kindergarten and grade two, I had them test out whether they could type in the access code themselves. And they were able to do it independently, except for they couldn't make it a capital letter. So we took away capitalization needed. All they have to do is type a letter and six numbers. But you shouldn't even have to do that because your access code should embed in any of the links you do. And if you're looking at songs, go to the song list. If I want them to learn doobie doobie do, I choose my video. I want my, I want them to see the kids. And then boom, again, you can see my access code is in the link to that video. So we're going to look on beta today at the online lessons for lesson 33. So I go to learning modules. I go to pre-K and I go to lesson 33. Um, I've left the old lesson 33 from 2020 on in case you use that in your planning, but I'm updating all these lessons. So we're going to start with the uh, hello song in three languages. I've had a request to take the names out. So we're going to ask our recording engineer to do that. But for now, you can use it for all the names. And then we have the shake it song, shake it, shake it, shake it, and shake it, shake it, shake it, and shake it, shake it, shake it, and stop. It's a fun song. Kids will love it. We're going to review. There was a little turtle and he lived in a box. He swam in the river and he climbed on the rocks. He snapped at a mosquito and he snapped at a flea and he snapped at a minnow and he snapped at me. He caught the mosquito and he caught the flea and he caught the minnow, but he didn't catch me. And this week when we use it, we're talking about the turtle climbing on the rocks. And that is going to be a separated sound. When the turtle's swimming, it's smooth. So the kids are going to move to the music to show that they can hear when the music is smooth and when it's separated. Let's just watch a little bit of this, make it full screen. And they get visual hints if you're showing them the video. Of course, you could do it without the video. Climbing on the rocks, separated notes. So a fun movement activity and a good way to make smooth and separated um, to have the children respond to show that they can hear the difference. And then they do the letter L. Letter L says O. Letter L says O. Like lion, letter L says L, 
and then we do Leo the Lion. And then as um, I have the worksheets available to you, I didn't put them in this lesson, so I'll have to make a note to self to add the worksheet uh, graphic to the lesson to remind you that the worksheets are there and available if you wish to use them. The one that I always like the kids to do is this one where they practice two lines, uppercase, lowercase L, and they draw two things that start with L. So it could be lion and it could be, all I can think of is lawn, but I'm sure there's more L words that you can think of. And then we do the song Trot Old Joe. You could play along with it and rhythm sticks will sound a little bit like a trotting horse. I actually, somewhere in my collection of instruments have um, a dried out coconut shell. And when you clop on that coconut shell, it really does sound like a horse trotting. Um, but it's a cute song. It goes slow, medium, fast. So a chance for kids to experiment with tempo and they can have pretend stick horses or they could actually have real stick horses. And in the kids demo, you can see them moving with their real stick horses. I'll go to the middle of this. A few, oh, I guess I don't have stick horses for everybody and they don't seem too upset by it if they have a pretend one. In that particular class, I had to carry everything in. And so carrying a class set of stick horses uh, obviously filled my bags. And then we have Wild Horseman, which again is a horsey sound and you can get the kids to trot to this or play along with it. Review Mum is the Sunshine from the previous week. Review Nelly the Nanny Goat from the previous week. And then we end with Skinamarink, Giddink, Giddink. And that is the pre-K lesson for week uh, lesson 33, the second week of May. I know for some of our American teachers getting close to the end of the school year, our Canadians will still be going till the end of June. So these um, overview videos will continue till the end of June. Next, I'm going to look at the kindergarten lesson for lesson 33, May week two. And we have some review here if you have time. If not, we've got a very full lesson planned for you. Some, um, we have an old McDonald's coloring page. In fact, we have two versions of it. So start with the hello song. That's kind of fun. The shake it song, you'll know it well by the end of two or three weeks. And then we're going to learn old McDonald. And I've given this as an optional worksheet. The order of the verses is cow, pig, duck dog. So if you give the kids the sheet to color, they can uh, point to the verse that they're singing about as they sing the song. Um, for those teachers who are in person and aren't allowed to sing with their students, I think these coloring pages are a way to still have them learn the familiar songs and then they can go home and sing them. You could always give them a link to the module so that when they go home, they can uh, sing even if you can't sing in class. So we're going to sing the song Peanut, Peanut Butter. There is a gorgeous storybook of this. I have two of them. I have one that's small and one that's full size, and I'm sorry I forgot to bring it to show, um, but they are available. And so we sing the song, we create movements for it, and there is a really nice performance by this group, and it's all boys um, of the Peanut Butter song. Let's have a little look at them. Uh, so great movements that this class has created. I would do the same movements. If your kindergartens can't snap yet, and I can't make a sound with my left hand, only my right hand makes sound, tell them just to rub their fingers together and they'll eventually catch on to it. Move to the instruments um, is kind of a fun piece. And it, this is kind of an intro to being able to name and label all the classroom. Move to the instruments. Walk with the wood block. 
And I do want to redo that recording so it stands out a little bit more. That will happen in the next year. And then I've added some songs from pre-K because these are fun. If you've already moved to the instruments, now let's play the instruments. So play and play and stop. Play and play and stop. Play and play and stop. Let's play and play all through the day. Let's play and play and stop. That's always a very fun one for the kids. And this is from the module. There's a special module I'll show you on beta and on a classic actually. In learning modules, go to general and it's called instrument kit fun. And where did I put this instrument? Right there instrument kit fun. I'm going to do some organizing of the general section because there's too much in here. It's getting harder to find things. So instrument kit fun, but instrument kit fun has a lot of instrument songs that you can use with those instrument kits that you might have made in September. So there's if you're happy. We're going to review the on a log story. And if you do have a frog mural, one of these, um, you play it on a log. Mr. Frog sang his song the whole day long. Bum, 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 bum. A teacher this week posted on Facebook a picture of uh, one of her students had made a frog wheel out of Lego. And I thought that was just brilliant. So maybe your students can make a frog wheel if you don't have one. Review mums are special. This year, Mother's Day fell on the very first weekend in May. Some years, Mother's Day falls on the second weekend in May. So this will be an important review in years when Mother's Day falls on the second weekend. You might wanna just leave that one out. And that's our kindergarten lesson 33 for the second week of May. Um, I think your students will enjoy this. Let's look at grade one. Lesson 33 for the second week of May. And I kind of do a farm theme with kindergarten, a little bit with pre-K as well, and with grade one in May, because that's sort of when we start thinking about planting flowers and gardens. So I have lots of those kinds of songs. I have lots of supporting resources in here for the grade one lesson. Don't feel like you need to use them all, but they're all here if you want them. We start with the hello song, and then we haven't done vegetable rhythms for a while, and Boys I don't and think we've ever done broccoli. Do what I do right after I do it. Corn, carrot, carrot, broccoli. Corn, carrot, carrot, broccoli. Corn. And my grandchildren helped me with that too. And then you get to create your own rhythm with carrot and corn, and making this full screen it sizes it beautifully. Carrot, carrot, corn, 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 carrot, carrot, corn. I'm going to click my sticks on carrot and drum them on corn. Carrot, carrot, corn, 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 carrot, carrot, corn. And so you can have your students create their own rhythm patterns. And in the, um, supporting resources are manipulatives that you can print out. Then your students cut this up and they make their patterns with the pictures. So either way is fine. I don't use a color printer. I don't have, I have a color printer, but I don't use it for manipulatives for kids. I generally just print them in black and white. And then we're going to echo do me so in the key of F. And we're going to learn the song, How Many Fingers, using the solfa and note highlights. And I suggest that you pause at the end of each Ready, line and echo. Go. Is it to pause and echo? Is it three? Pause and echo. But you can see how the notes we highlight them. And so the kids are starting to realize that a higher sound is higher on the staff, a lower sound is lower on the staff. And if you've already been teaching Soulfish, it's going to do it in Soulfish. If you're new to Soulfish, teaching yourself, great way for you to learn. Go, so me, so. And you echo. If my voice worked, I'd happily show you. This is a nice range for children. Um, 
I'm old and croaky and I need surgery on my vocal folds and can't get it because of COVID. But um, this is a, a beautiful range for the children to be singing. And then we sing the whole song. How many fingers? Is it one, two, three, four, or five? And there's a little game. You can watch how the kids play the game. And I've got... Uh, uh, suggested ways to adapt it. If you're in person, can't sing, you use the recording, but you can still play the game so the kids get to experience this music even if they can't sing. And then I have activity six in rhythm interactive activities. Is it one sound or two? Is is one sound. It, one sound. Two is one sound. I'm gonna leave this blank. Um, it's only when I get to many that I have two sounds. How many? Uh, so that's how I teach them um, rhythms. So I do it first with icons. And then if you go to the next one, we're doing it with notes. Is it two rest? And then you can put it in. And you can label the notes using whatever rhythm syllables you, you use. I use ta for one sound on a beat. I use tt for two sounds on a beat and a rest. I will call it shh, but really we should just gesture with our hands and not make any sound on a rest. Um, I've got activity seven as well, but you can just click to the next button. You get to the same thing. If you wish to review, that's my mom. And then we have this beautiful intro video to aviary from Carnival of the Animals. I just think these are so gorgeous and they really engage the children. The children really love these videos. Uh, this is the backyard of our Red Deer Symphonies director, Claude Lapalme. And he had posted this on Facebook and I got the footage from him and we included it in the video. It's just fabulous. Um, I've got bird responders for you to make and I've actually made some new ones. Uh, this is a color. This is a black and white and the black and white one, the kids could color themselves. Um, but typically I would cut this up and only give them one and then you glue it or tape it to a craft stick. Tape is gonna be faster. And then as you're listening to Aviary, you show how the notes go higher and how they go lower. There's a kid's demo here, which is, I would say, not perfect. I wouldn't mind actually doing it again. But it'll give you an idea of what you can do with that. And then we have the Aviary worksheet. And again, I started doing these in portrait. But Kathleen Tyson asked me for landscape, so I started making them in landscape, and I actually like the landscape better. And I've got all of these um, that you can put into a booklet, and the kids can take home a Carnival of the Animals booklet. This is not just coloring. This is learning concepts. Does a flute play fast or slow? What instrument is playing the melody? Ah, it's a flute. Does a flute play high or low? Circle it. It plays high. What other instruments are playing? The piano the double bass, the cello, the viola, the violin. Um, and the kids, again, for in-person classes where you're not allowed to sing, this could be a real lifesaver this year. And then on our farm theme, oats and beans and barley grow, oats and beans and barley grow. And then we review, is this review? Yes, it is. I did the actions last week. We review the dance La Raspa. Teachers are saying they were able to do the partner part simply by spacing out and just gesturing to the partner, not actually holding their hands. And then review that's my mum if you wish. And in a year when Mother's Day falls on the second weekend, that might be something you want to do. So that's grade one, lesson 33 for the second week of May. Let's look at grade two. Lesson 33, May week two. And we're going to be doing some more frogs. That frog we are always going to get a good workout. Start with the hello song. Review, oh, my aunt came back. What a great warm-up for kids. Great beekeeping, 
engaging, fun for them. And then we're going to learn the Japanese frog song. I start with this because in the song, um, one of the places the ant goes to in the song, um, to old Japan, old Japan, brought with her, brought with her a waving fan, a waving fan. So um, we sort of have a nice lead in to the song. The song means I can hear the song of the frog, gua, gua, gua. And gua is the sound that the frog makes in Japan. So pause the video and read the rhythms. I often do this. Oh, I put the wrong video in. That's not going to work. I'll have to change that video. I've got two things now that I have to remember to do after this. Um, I often put, uh, put the song up and then pause the video, read the rhythms. If it's a rhythm reading song, let's read it. That's what we're learning to read music for. And then we're going to learn another song, Frog in the Middle. It's fun. And I don't have a kid's demo of it, but I do have a link to a student's demo. This is a university class that plays the game the same way. John's in the middle. And you can hear they substituted the name of the person. So he does kind of like cut the cake where he slices hands. The way I've played it, I cover eyes and then the frog holds the hands out and the two people that the frog is pointing to become the racers and they race in the same direction. So I've always done the game a little bit differently. And then they race around all the way back to their spot and the first one to clap my hands or the frog's hands is the winner of the race. So um, a little bit different ways. And I've explained how I play it. You get to see a way of, and, and then there's uh, suggestions for adapting it. We've got uh, contradance here. This is one of our lovely, beautiful new play-alongs. And of course you can substitute whatever instruments you have. And it's a beautiful way to introduce it. Um, I've got movement with two paper plates, which is really fun. If you don't have paper plates, just do it with your hands. Watch me now because it works just as well. It's very expressive, even if you just have hands. If you do have plates, kids like them. And then we learn a little bit about Mozart. We review Juanito cuando baila, 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 our songs from last week and La Raspa from last week and optional review mom you're the best and that's our grade two lesson 33 for may week two now i'm going to grade three lesson 33 for may week two and i'm starting them off with the review of the dances from the previous week that'll wear them out and make them settle down for you for the rest of the class or else it'll get them wound up. Um, but Los Machetes and La Raspa were really fun. If you didn't do them last week, you've got the demos of both so you can uh, learn the dance. Then we've got Echo Solfa and we're going to echo Do, Re, Mi, So and get ready for reading the song Someone's Tapping, which is in exactly the same key. So after they've done all those patterns, the solfa notes are given up here, and they should be able to read me, me, re, 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 do, do, so. I'm never sure if my notes are going to come out because my vocal folds don't work. Um, but I would for sure have them read the rhythm. T, T, ticka, ticka, T, T, ta, ta, T, T, ta. And if they can do that and that's all they can do, wonderful. They're still reading reading music. Um, if they can do the solfa and after echoing the solfa here, they should have at least a little bit of an idea. So, mi, do, re, re, do. so you can see we're in the same key as this. So, and your little answer box is here. 
Um, the, it's a game. So we've got a demo of how I played the game and you can uh, adapt. Again, you can adapt this for no singing by using the video and the two singers, instead of singing the solo one and solo two, they would clap. And the next one, solo two is, and then um, the kids have to guess who did what. You, you just have to do what you can if you're not allowed to sing in person. Virtually, you have two kids hide their eyes, then you choose the two soloists, and um, you have the soloists only unmute. So the ones with their eyes covered, guess. Then we have create an eight beat rhythm pattern, and this is with um, the song, Beat and Rhythm Interactives. Tee, tee, ta, ticka, ticka, ta. And if you prefer in the printables, I believe I've got the worksheet and that might be another thing I forgot to put in, so I'll do it. Next, we have a listening selection and this is a new play along, another new one. And if you have a hand drum, it would be beautiful with this piece. It would sound like you're part of the Renaissance Ensemble. <laughs> great piece. And I think that's a recorder playing in that uh, ensemble. So a great example of recorder, real recorder playing for kids, not just hot cross buns. And then we have the uh, listen and respond where they answer, uh, they answer questions about the song. What instrument families do you hear? Well, I hear it some kind of percussion. I think it's a tambourine and I hear a woodwind. I think it's a recorder. What's the tempo? I'd say that's pretty moderato. Is the music quiet or loud? I'd say medium loud. Smooth and flowing or detached? I would say separated. Um, I'm using the word smooth and bumpy with our littlest people. Describe the mood of the piece. Oh, to me, it's upbeat and happy. It makes me feel happy. Maybe, maybe this happy, maybe not this happy. But you discuss the questions with the kids or you have them fill out the worksheet. And then we have a song about friends and invite the kids. Uh, again, this is a good activity if you're in person, invite the kids to make a picture showing some of the things they like to do with friends. This is a Bob Schneider piece and it's actually really quite a lovely piece. I enjoy the Bob Schneider piece, pieces and the kids do too. So that's grade three, lesson 33, May week two. Next, we're looking at grade four, lesson 33, May week two. I've got a Christian body percussion lesson. I didn't do a score for it this week because this really, the body percussion pattern that he uses, um, it's chest, chest with one hand, snap with the other, and I can't snap with my left. Chest, snap. And that's what he's teaching, is how to do body percussion that mimics the sound of the drum set. So it's not a long lesson, but it's great warm up for the kids. Echo, do, re, mi, so in the key of F, and then they're going to learn the song Old Blue. And again, I would listen to it and be sure that, um, this is a reading song. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, tu. And we've got do, re, mi, so in the key of D. Hopefully I've got do, re, mi, so in the key of, nope, I don't have the wrong key there. We'll have to fix that. Um, regardless, they should be able to sing the soulfish or I would hope they could sing the soulfish in fourth grade. Um, we've got clapping the words. Is it one sound or two? So this is, um, I had a dog and his name was Blue. This again is reinforcing the reading. I don't want that one. I'm going to close it and I'm going to go to the next. Is it one, uh, one sound or two? I had a dog and his name was 
blue. And that sound is more than one beat. It's a half note. I call it two. You can use whatever rhythm names you use. Create a new rhythm pattern that uses half notes. So I'm linking them to the rhythm composition tool and suggesting level three. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, two. And that was the first two lines of old blue. Ti, 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 ta, ta, two, two. And you can play it. Here we go. If you would rather, or if you don't have devices for the kids, there's a worksheet in supporting resources where they can do it on paper. Or you could simply ask them to write the rhythm on paper. And I've left a line on this side so that they can write what instrument or body percussion they would like. So if I want to play mine on a guiro, I can do it. And then we're going to watch a short video about Franz Liszt and listen to this amazing piano concerto and try and answer as many questions as we can. And this is the order we try and answer. What's my initial reaction? It's fast. That's a piano. And then I go to describing more of the music. What elements of music am I hearing? Uh, interpreting, how, how did the composer use the elements to create a mood or a feeling? Well, by doing it really, really fast, he made us think of whatever. And then we have a worksheet for them to do as well. If you don't have printers at home, you just do the answers on a plain piece of paper. So that's the grade four lesson. Lesson 33, May week two. I'm doing the lesson now for grade five and for middle school. We're doing the same for them for this week. So we're going to do a folk song that made it to the pop charts. And we get to do Bruce Springsteen in this lesson. How fun is that? So we've got a comparison worksheet where we get to compare a traditional performance with Bruce Springsteen's. So first we're going to learn the song, Oh Mary, Don't You Weep No More. So play a line, have the kids echo. Um, it's actually a really lovely song and it's one that you can play quite easily on the recorder because it only uses five notes. to play, whether you're able to play on recorders or glockenspiels or whatever, um, but I would start by having the kids sing if you're allowed to. Uh, if not, you listen to it and do what you can. Um, the, um, the author of this lesson, Heather Morris, has written a lovely desk count that you can add above it. And then we add an accompaniment, and the accompaniment is stomp, clap, And you do it while you sing the chorus of Oh Mary, Don't You, Don't You Weep. Uh, you could perform the same rhythm pattern, drum, woodblock, tambourine. Um, I can't play all the parts, but I'll go, um, I'll use my practice pad at the top. So I'll use rim, top. And students are invited to create a new 16 beat rhythm pattern that they could play along with with it. We talk a little bit about time signature and this is just part of, we want kids not just to have fun in music class, but to learn to read and write music. I want literate musicians. So talk about the time signature, how many beats are in each measure, what are measures, what are the, you know, and uh, how many beats are there in each measure. And then there's uh, shows the five notes that are used. So if you're on recorder, it's E, 
G A B C. So not terribly, terribly difficult for grade five and six kids, especially to play on a recorder, um, play it on an instrument. Here's a link to that virtual glockenspiel. So if I can um, split my screen, I could play it on the virtual glockenspiel. I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, this is the story behind the song. The song is very old. It was sung long before Abraham Lincoln was uh, president of the United States. And the words speak about a people who were finally freed from a life of submission. In the first verse, it talks about Moses, people who were freed from slavery under Pharaoh. Um, and the words were very appealing to enslaved people in the Southern United States of the 1880s. It became popular again during the African-American civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s. At that time, different words were written using a similar melody, If You Miss Me at the Back of the Bus. So we have a link to Pete Seeger singing, If You Miss Me at the Back of the Bus. If you miss me at the back of the bus, you can't find me nowhere. Oh, come on. So that is one performance of it. I actually have a second recording because I couldn't decide which one to include. Um, you don't have to use both or go to both, but it's it's um, a really nice contrast. And I like this <clears throat> because it, it kind of refers to the Rosa Parks incident where she wasn't allowed to sit in the, the seat she wanted to sit on the bus. Um, <clears throat> so that for grade five, grade six kids, these are good things to be talking about. So then we're going to listen to the Georgia Field Hands and make some notes about what the music sounds like. What are your first impressions? What instruments were used? Think about the elements of music. And then we have a link this is a 1929 performance. This is incredible that we have footage of this. It's a great performance. I wish I could show you the whole thing. Um, and then we're going to listen to Oh Mary Don't You Weep No More performed by Bruce Springsteen. Ask the same questions. Think about the same the same things, and then we link to the boss's version of this. We're talking a very different style of playing exactly the same piece. Start singing. Jesus name, so this is where you have the comparison worksheet and you can get the kids to compare these two extremely different performances. Great performances, both of them. Um, and uh, again, I think this is a really, really good lesson for grade fives and for middle school. I'll be working in the next lessons through other folk songs that have gone to the pop charts using Heather Morris's lessons. So thank you. This is Lesson 33 Overview, May Week 2. I'm Denise Gagne, creator of Music Play and Music Play Online. Thank you for joining me.